afternoon or whatever the time of the day might be when you are able to join us and celebrate our candlelight carol this third year of doing this event an opportunity for us to remind ourselves in song and lesson the reason for the season and in this way in this year we probably need to find a way to gather to remember this gift that we celebrate at Christmas we need to find a way to gather in a way that is safe, in a way that is actually showing love for our neighbor as ourselves and care for one another. So I welcome you into this space that has a little bit of an echo, that has a little bit of an empty feeling, but not entirely. 
it still has the feeling of the body of Christ, the gathered saints, the great cloud of witnesses. And so may this evening be a time to remember all that we have to be truly thankful for, this gift that we celebrate on Christmas Day. And so a big thank you to all who made this possible, for our director of music, Aaron Rice, for putting this all together, for our accompanist, Rebecca Solomon, and all of her work that she did, for the Tucson Boys Chorus, and for all of the soloists and readers and all that worked so very hard in a very different way to make this happen. But then again, we celebrate at Christmas a God who came and showed love in a very different way, a way that many of us might not have seen. Well now, may we see it in song and in word. Let us pray. Stir up your hearts, O Lord, to prepare the way for the coming of your Son. Give us faith and courage to proclaim in word and deed the good news that is coming into the world, and grant us patience and peace as we await his coming and remember his gift. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me she gave me the fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals, and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly, you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. To the woman he said, I will greatly increase your pangs in childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children, yet your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. And to the man he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree about which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat of the plants of the fields. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread until you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken. You are dust, and to dust you shall return.
After these things, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. He said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. Reconcile your people. Come now, O God of love, make us one body. Come, O Lord Jesus, reconcile your people. Come now and set us free, O God our Savior. Come, O Lord Jesus, reconcile all nations. Come, hope of unity, make us one body. Come, O Lord Jesus, reconcile all nations. walked in darkness, have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests on his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time onward and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this.
a shoot shall come out of the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of its roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like an ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaning child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Oh, 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 oh,
In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then angel departed from her.
It is said that those who sing pray twice. And it is my hope that you've been joining in to the prayers and the music, the prayers of the soul, singing up in praise of this great gift that we celebrate. And so at this moment, let us stop and just simply pray. Almighty God, you gave us your only Son to take on our human form and to illumine the world with your light. By your grace, adopt us as your children and enlighten us with your Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. What child is this who laid to rest on Mary's lap is he who angels greet with anthem sweet while shepherds watch? 
were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Now let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them.
during the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, Bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh.
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. The light is coming into the world. The light came and people did not understand it. A promise that was foretold, repeated and reiterated countless times. The coming of a Messiah. I wonder how many people just thought that it was a fairy tale. Maybe that it was, shall we say, fake news. That this Messiah would come. That God would indeed act. I wonder how many of us, in the midst of everything going on right now, basically are thinking the same thing. That this was all fake news. That there was nothing really there. That nothing really happened. That God wouldn't want to come into this. That God would not want to be Brothers and sisters, children of God, members of the family, that's maybe the hardest thing to realize is that God did indeed choose to come. And not just as some, you know, pillar of fire or some other massive display of glory and strength, but as one of the most helpless things in all creation, a human child. And not born to some princess in a palace, but born to an unmarried teenage girl in a stable in a small farming community. It's so incredulous 
to think that God would do something like that. Unless we realize that's what God's all about. That God is actually seeking the lost. That God is actually the God of the poor and the oppressed, the sick, the prisoner. Maybe if we stop and think about the fact of how God chose to come into this world, the things that Jesus said and did all actually make sense. It makes sense that Jesus would tell a story about a shepherd who would leave 99 sheep to go find the one lost one. It makes no sense as a shepherd. It makes no sense to us now. Unless we realize that we're the one. Jesus came to show us what God's power is really all about. To show us what the kingdom of God is like. And it is surprising. And it's going to come at us from very strange places. It will embody the reality of what Jesus said when he said, when you care for the least of these, you did it to me. For us at Christmas, when so many are mourning, loss, hit, the loss of the opportunity to travel, to celebrate, to do vacations like we normally did, to gather and worship like we usually did, or for those mourning family members that died this year, or family members that can't be with them because they're isolating or quarantining. When we think about all of those that are worried about if they're going to have a job or a place to live or any of those other things, will we remember the fact of what Jesus actually did at Christmas? Will that open our eyes to see God at work in the world and God's calling to us to give glory and praise and song and prayer in worship that carries itself outside and carries itself to the last, the least, the little, and the lost. For with, we, with our blessings, remember that we have those blessings to be a blessing. The gift of peace on earth and goodwill to all is a gift for us and a gift to share. And so as we sing like joy to the world in silent night, when we ponder what child is this and all of those other Christmas hymns and carols, they come to mind at this time of the year. May we realize that this babe of Bethlehem would become the Christ of Calvary. The gift of a virgin's womb will then become the gift of an empty tomb. The gift of life will become the gift of eternal life, new life, that will come to us Christmas Day and every other day, because he chose to be with us. So Merry Christmas, each and every day, and peace on earth and goodwill to all. And remember that God loves you, and so do I. Amen.
Thank you again for joining us at beautiful Savior Lutheran Church of Tucson for our candlelight carol and this opportunity for us to gather still wherever we are to remember the gift of God in Jesus Christ that we celebrate at Christmas. And maybe, just maybe, remember the fact that as you were able to do this in your house or wherever you are, on whatever device you may be using, when we think of, O come, O come, Emmanuel, we realize that God is with us wherever we are. And so, as we go forth from wherever we are, to wherever God is calling us, go forth with this blessing. May God the Father, the Creator of the heavens and the earth, continue to create in you. May God, the Son, the Redeemer, the Babe of Bethlehem, continue to bring you life and love and grace in abundance. And may God, the Holy Spirit, continue to inspire, sustain, and send you to go forth using those gifts that we have been blessed with to be a blessing to the world. So may your light so shine before others as the light of the world has come. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Uh -huh.